Hey guys, welcome back. Another low production video, you, me, and the whiteboard. I'm going to talk about one of the biggest, most important, smallest things that you've ever heard. Now let me tell you what I mean by that. The title of today's video snippet is, It's All Small. Alright, so any questions? We're all done. No, I know that doesn't make much sense. Let me tell you how it does. I just want you to think about something that someone that you know, um, that you admire, has accomplished in one of the significant areas of life. Let's take maybe health. Maybe you look at somebody and they're all toned and hard bodied and in shape and healthy and all that and you go, that is just amazing how they look or what they've done. Or you look at somebody who has built a business or a successful um, you know, business or company and you look at it and it's so like overwhelming and you go, how could anybody build that? Or you look at somebody with a really strong relationship or a marriage and you look at that and you go, how come they are able to do that so well? In all of these areas of life, and it could be a skill, you know, look at, look at a great golfer or athlete and, and you go, how, why can't I be like that? And the that, whatever the that is, we think it's so incredible and it's so like amazingly, overwhelmingly huge in their accomplishment. All right, so what happens is we naturally look at where we are and we look at that, whatever the that is, and we think, oh, I wish I could do that, or I wish I could have that. And we look at where we are, and that, and here's where we are. Remember I talked about the gap, and here's the that. And we go, it's too big. I can't do that. I can't build a business like that, or I can't look like that and be in shape like that, or I can't, whatever that is, because this is just too far. It's way too far. All right, now let me tell you the secret to getting that in any area of life. It could be your spiritual life, emotional life, whatever it is. Nobody who has that ever got that. That's not what they did. That's not what they did. That's not how they did it. Let's take somebody that has that and say they, you know, they're, they're at the ideal weight, whatever that is. And let's say you're 50 pounds over your ideal weight. You look at them and you go, I just can't do that. Well, the reason you can't do that is they didn't do that either. You know what they did? They did this. And then the next day, they did this. And then the next day, they did this. And then the day after that, you know what they did? I bet you guessed it. They did this. Now what are these? They got up, they went for a 45 minute walk, or, and the next day they did their jumping jacks, and the next day they did something else, and the next day they did something else. Or, or you see a couple that has a great relationship, they didn't do that. What they did was they sat down and spent an hour listening to each other and talking about a conflict or a problem. Or they spent an hour the next day putting their own interests aside and trying to see how they could help or serve their partner or how they could um, enhance their relationship in some way. Or if they were building you know some sort of skill like a great golf game or anything else they went to the practice range and they hit balls for an hour one day and then the next day they did it again. If you look at a company, big company, let's pick a big one, how about Microsoft? One day they wrote a line of code, and the next day they wrote another line of code, and the next day they wrote another line of code. See, this is the point. We measure ourselves by the end result that we see, instead of measuring ourselves by, am I doing the little bitty step today, and the next day, and the next day, it ends up in that, because the reality is, Nobody ever did that. They did this in every single area of life. Now, here's what happens. We have two big diseases, all and now. We want it all 
and we want it now. So what happens is you get all motivated, you're going to lose 50 pounds or something, and so you do really well right here in doing your workout, and you do really well right here, and you do it for a few days, and you're starving yourself, and you think, you know, I'm going to lose it, and I'm going to make my goal, and then you go step on the scales. Maybe it hasn't even moved, like maybe just a teeny wee that much. And you look at, I've done all this, and i got to get to there. That's how much I lost. It will never happen. You know why? Because you judge it by the goal instead of by, am I sticking to the process? So we'll judge ourselves not by the process, which is right, but wrongly we'll judge ourselves by looking at the goal again. And you let the goal defeat you when the goal should be motivating us. The second thing is, we want it now. We want it to happen now. And nothing ever got built that way, ever. So what I want you to think about is in these key areas of life where you want that, let that motivate you in terms of the dream of what you want to accomplish, but don't let it judge you in terms of the relationship between it and where you are now. Like an addict, for example, they want a sober, successful life, and they're a drunk or an addict, you know, on drugs right now. What do they need to do? They can have a successful life tomorrow, but they can go to one meeting today and another meeting tomorrow and a third meeting the next day, and they'll get there because it's happened a million times. Let me give you a, a, a great example from, from my field. You know, I write books. Um, books don't just sort of appear. You don't sit down and, I'm going to write that. What you do is... You type out a word at a time. One of my favorite stories about this is John Grisham, you know, the novelist, who's sold gazillions and millions of trillions of books. He was an attorney and a state legislator, and he always had a dream. He wanted to be that. He wanted to be an author. But he had no time because he had a full-time law practice, and he was, a, you know, going to the state capital and all the legislative process and think how busy he is. But he really wanted that, but he never could do that. He didn't have time for that. You know what he did? He got up a little early every morning and he wrote, are you ready for this? One page. And the next day he got up and he wrote another page. And the next day he got up and he wrote another page. And then at the end of doing this, he ended up with that, which was at the end of the year, he had his first book, it was called A Time to Kill, and you probably saw the movie. But see, he didn't do that, he did this. So pick your area, building a better relationship, getting in shape, reaching your goals, getting healthy, learning a new skill, and let that motivate you to do this, a little step at a time. Okay, send me your comments, I'm loving hearing from you guys, and I'll see you next time.